Hi, it's Francis Angelone with Total Package Hockey, and I'm here today to talk to you about a very popular topic in hockey circles at this time of the year, the hot topic of recruiting. Now, I'm sure many of you have either already given thought or are in the process of giving thought to where you want to play next season. I'd like to offer you eight tips for finding your fit, selecting the right coach, team, and program not just for next season, but beyond. Tip number one, it's one of the pillars of the TPH way. Honesty and trust are paramount. I'm referencing how you're being recruited, what the coach's message is, what you're being promised in the recruiting process. All of you should want to find a coach that you can build a relationship with, a partnership that will maximize your growth and development, not just on the ice as a player, but off the ice as an athlete and as a person. That's a good thing to be on the lookout for. But before you can have a partnership with your coach, there must be trust. And prior to trust, there must be honesty. Honesty is the number one non-negotiable for any successful relationship. And what better time to evaluate honesty than early on in the recruiting process when they want you. Here's a little tip from my experience. Value coaches that talk quality versus quantity. Here's what I mean. Good coaches aren't afraid to forecast what they think the situation is going to be for the coming season, but most coaches don't know now in the spring how they're gonna distribute their ice time in October, November, December, etc. They don't know now who's going to be on the power play and who's going to be on the penalty kill. So if you're being promised any of the above, be careful. Value quality versus quantity. Number two, prioritize culture, program, and environment. This is a big one. I'm referencing things like the brand of the organization. What does the organization stand for? What do they represent? What is their reputation, not just in your market, but also in the hockey world? What is the brand of the coach and the support staff? Does the coach dress like the Zamboni driver? Or does he dress like a coach? It's that simple. Does he act like a teacher, a mentor, a leader? Does he command that respect? Or does he want to be one of the boys? Don't underestimate the power of the eye test. It works. How about locker room culture? Maybe some of you have been given the opportunity to practice with the team that's recruiting you and experience a day in the life. There's an old saying that the players are a reflection of the coach. You'll learn a lot about the coach when you look at how the players in the locker room act and how they treat one another. Keep in mind, in most circumstances, these are players that the coach has recruited. Some other questions to consider. How much of a one-stop shop is the opportunity? If you play for this coach and this team, are you gonna learn how to eat right, how to sleep right, how to train right, how to practice right, how to play right, how to live right, or are you gonna have to go and learn about those things on your own? How much of a one-stop shop is the opportunity? How much of the process will you learn about by playing for this particular team? These next few are big, especially if you're going away from home to play hockey. What is the location and the travel schedule? Are you going to be playing for a team where you're gonna miss a lot of practice, where you're gonna miss a lot of school? You need to know this going in. What is the safety of the community? Is this particular location, community, a place where you're gonna to wanna to grow up when you're not at the rink? You can only spend so many hours a day at the rink. Is this a place you're gonna to wanna to live? Is it safe? And last but not least, the quality of the billet families. You know, I used to tell my billet families when I coached junior hockey that their job is to be like a second family to the players, to nurture them, to guide them, and to support them. 
Are you going to live in a safe, clean, comfortable environment where you're going to have your freedom, you're going to have your space, and you're going to be comfortable and continue to grow as a young man? Very, very important question to ask. Number three, gauge the competitiveness. The competitiveness of the practices. Are the practices going to be mentally and physically stimulating? Are they going to challenge you? The off-ice training sessions, are you going to be pushed by your coaches and by your teammates to get stronger, to get faster, to develop your athleticism? How about your potential teammates? Are you going to be playing around like-minded, competitive people who have a burning desire to get better every day? They say that if very good players practice with other very good competitive players, it's just a matter of time before you approach greatness. So what is the competitiveness going to be of your teammates? And lastly, the competitiveness of your schedule. Quality versus quantity. It's better to play 40 games against tough competition and have a lot of practices than it is to coast through 90 games and say you played a ton, but you played average. Look for quality of schedule, that's very, very important. Moving down the list of tips for finding your fit, learn about the program's track record for developing players and people, for advancing them on to the collegiate, to the junior, to the professional levels. And here's a very underrated point, transactions. If there's any way, especially if you're looking at junior programs, to see the team's transactions, if there's a lot of X's next to players' names, there's usually a reason. Ask. On that line, ask tough questions. Look, you only get one chance to go through the recruiting process for a given season. So whatever is important to you, ask it. Be honest. Be direct. Get your answers in the beginning so you can make the very best, most informed decision possible. The process is a two-way street. You know, the coach is interviewing you, but you're also interviewing him. You're also interviewing the program. When I coached junior hockey, we had a set criteria of character to determine if a potential player was our kind of guy. And we used to say to players, we're trying to determine if you're our kind of guy, ask us the tough questions, we like them. We want to find out if we're also your type of place. Next one's important, very important, communicate. Maybe some of you are being recruited by multiple teams, and perhaps you're not interested in some. Call the coaches back and let them know that. I believe in something called the 72-hour rule. If a player doesn't get back to me in 72 hours, in my own mind, right or wrong, I dismiss him as not interested. Get back to people. The third bullet point on your screen, you know, honesty and trust are paramount. You're trying to determine if the coach that's recruiting you is honest and trustworthy. That's a two-way street. They're also trying to determine that about you. So how you communicate, getting back to people, that goes a long way. And keep in mind, hockey is a very, very small world. The coach that's recruiting you now that you might not be interested in, you might cross paths with him at a later date. He will remember how you conducted yourself in the recruiting process. Communication is a very, very big component. And to tie this all together, spot red flags. Just to review some of this we've already talked about. Opportunities are earned. This is another one of those TPH way pillars. Remember this line, if it is to be, it is up to me. You are entitled to nothing but the opportunity to earn success on your hard work and your merit alone. If a coach tells you otherwise in the recruiting process, be careful. I'll leave it at that. That P word promises and entitlement, you know, entitlement promises, the entitlement pitch inevitably leads to a big crash. So steer clear. And lastly, your career. It's not a used car. 
You should be looking for a hockey coach, not a salesman. The last tip I have for you, I want you to watch this clip from Toronto Maple Leafs head coach, Mike Babcock. The other thing that I think part of this year, when we talked about it last summer, I didn't think that, to me it's like a player. If you arrive when you're over ready, you have confidence and you stay long. And when you arrive when you're not ready, you leave fast. So, you know, I think you set up good. Arrive over ready. Don't be in a rush to make it to the top. I love this line. Be impatiently patient. This means be impatient. Be hard on yourself. Be demanding of the things that are within your control. Your work ethic, your preparation, your attitude, your choices. But be patient with the overall process. Don't just arrive to the next level when you're ready. Arrive when you're over ready and you're going to have the confidence to stick and be successful. Success is truly a journey, not a destination. I wish you all the very best in finding your fit for the upcoming season. Thank you very much for watching.